from the Tom O'Brien Show on TFNN. Uh, let's take a look over here at my screen. We're looking at the front page of TFN, TFNN.com. A lot of cool stuff coming to the site in uh, the coming months. Let's take a look over here, though, first at newsletters, okay? We have a bunch of really neat stuff. All right, again, check it out. We have 30-day money-back guarantee on all of our newsletters, but right now, the one I really want to put in the spotlight, as we do every Tuesday, is the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, this is what I'm going to say with this newsletter, right? Very thorough. You're going to get something on Saturday as well from Basil, which is a fantastic way to kind of end the prior week and begin the new one. And additionally to all of this, once you subscribe to the opening call newsletter, you get access to these subscriber webinars that Basil Chapman has done. Now, the most recent one was July 3rd, and it's sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. Now, Listen, when I fill in on Tom, fill in for Tom, I'm always saying we have these new kind of phases coming in, right? And I've learned so much from Basil Chapman. And I, you know, kind of audit a lot of these uh, webinars and they're just fantastic and I learned so much. So get in there, go ahead and subscribe. Again, that is a 30 day money back guarantee for if whatever reason it doesn't work out for you, I'm betting that it is going to. We are joined by Basil Chapman himself. Basil, how you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well. Just getting into the new office, kind of enjoying all of it, seeing the uh, kind of breath holding the market's doing right now. Kind of curious of what you're looking at today. All right. Well, let me just start off with this. I, I'm showing this chart here, and it just basically says the Chapman Wave Notation. It's a very simple concept that I developed oh, a long time when I, when I used to hand chart with a engineering paper, pencil, and, and a ruler. So... Um, I identify a low bar, and then I want to see higher peaks. And as long as that low bar, the starting point isn't taken out, I numerate uh, with the alphabet sequentially, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, higher peaks, and the uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. But most importantly, if I get a buy signal that is upgraded to a buy mode, the implication is that there should be at least four higher peaks. It can go higher. It can recycle. It could. That, that's where you could have your deepest pullback. But D is your objective. It means that once I've titled it a buy mode, the implication is there should be a higher peak to peak, at least a fourth highest peak, peak D. So let's see what we've got. We've got. In the, I don't want to go through the, the uh, implications of other things that I discussed earlier about the a phantom peak. I've done that on my show, and if anyone's interested, today's show, I enumerated that. Um, it's, it's where there's a parallel high. But most importantly, we finally got today a leg D to the upside, and D is where other things can happen. You also see in the daily chart of the Dow a cup and handle formation. Not one of my favorite patterns. Why? Because when the handle breaks out to the upside, invariably it comes back down and tests the, the handle part. So if you don't perfect the uh, turnaround at the bottom to be able to um, get the benefit of the move to the new recovery high, it's, you kind of, you're late to the party. Let's put it that way. Now, what's happening in the weekly chart? Well, lo and behold, this week we went to a leg D. What are the pink and green parallel uh, channel lines right here? That's what I call the inside track repellent zone. And we've gone to that D. It's just, it's underneath the pink line and says this whole area must be monitored because that's where the price in this particular pattern keeps pulling back from. And if you look at the monthly chart, We've got a yellow circle here, which says is what I call an instant restart from a peak D. That's really important. And here we are in leg E. And this is a chance that we could go quite a lot higher uh, because all the technicals are still positive. So on the very short term, once you get to a D, yellow light flashes for me. You don't have to go short, but this is where we're looking at to say, what do I do next? We have been long. We've been long. You can see right from here from the lows that were made back August the 5th. We've added to our um, three times long position. So we, we are looking at the Dow positively, but we're going to see what happens right here with the Fed and everything. So we've got the D, leg D, the day before the Fed came up. But then we're also along the IWM, the Russell 2000. It's had a really nice move. It kind of stalled and it pulled back. And today just missed making a peak D. Uh, a leg D, I'm sorry, from the high that was made 
back on the 26th of August at uh, 222.45. So far, today's high is 221.80. So I'm watching this very closely to see if the small caps, this is the small caps, iShares, IWM, if that can start a move that takes it to the 226 area. So I was just talking about this technique that I call the instant restart. And I had mentioned this to you uh, a little while back we were, uh, where you um, interviewed me. And I said, this is going to be a very good example of the instant restart, which occurs at a peak D. But certain things have to happen. This is a stock called Solventum Corporation, healthcare spin-off from Triple M. It's trading at 71.93 today. It hit 73.40. Um, and there was an instant restart right at the 200 period exponential moving average. And because it's gone this high after that D, now I can just continue the lettering going E. If there's another high, it becomes an F. And it's a slightly different thing. And I wanted to treat this for both subscribers and for folks who watch my show, the Tiger Conditions Hour at 10 every day, just to say, let's see what happens with this, if this is what kind of an example it is of that particular technique. So I thought I'd show that. Oh, I should mention that we're actually long from the 57s, and here it is at 71. So it's done very nicely. Um, and then something else I wanted to mention is if this, if after the Fed speak, the market is positive, we want to see the, the brokerage houses. We still along the IAI, which is the broker dealer right from the low uh, back in 2020. Um, so it's done extremely well. But on the shorter term, we've, we went long Robin Hood markets. Uh, this is one of the reasons I wanted this is because I love the brokerage area if the market goes higher, because that's where people come into the market. But Robin is a little unconventional. It isn't the usual. It isn't like Merrill Lynch or uh, it's it's you know as Morgan Stanley uh, brokerage like that. This is a little different because it has to do with gold. It has to do with the brokerage area. So we went long off the low that was made back on the uh, August the fifth, and we're still long and it's trading now for, at, at 22. We're long in about I think in the 16s. So 22.54. And this one had a very big cup formation that went to a D and then started a new move to the upside, which I'm calling an E, but it's stalling right at the 200 period moving average. So if the market acts negatively to the, to the Fed by Friday's close, probably you'll see um, Robin Hood, H-U-O-D, is a symbol at 2255 right now, somewhere in the low 20s. If the market is favorable, I think you can see the 24s. But so far, it's holding extremely well. It's doing very nicely. And you were talking about, I, I happen to concur, I agree with you, that uh, Powell is rather conservative in his way of looking at it. He actually was very much, he was a Goldman Sachs guy. He understands the market very well. I think, I, I'm with you. I think that he's not going to the 50 It'll, he'll talk about it, but I don't think he'll go yet. He doesn't need to go yet. I think the quarter point, and we'll see how the market responds to that. Absolutely. Basil, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you. Folks, go get yourself the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman and stay right there because we have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on next.